Good morning. It is January 6, 2024. It is a cloudy overcast day here in Garneville, Iowa. Temperatures are in the 20s and look to be typical winter weather, a little cooler than we've been experiencing, but not unbearable. The forecast does indicate uh, quite a bit of snow this coming week. Uh, we'll hopefully see if that plays out or not. We could use the moisture, but I don't really particularly want all the snow. But it will come as it comes. Reminder of the funeral services this afternoon for Marilyn Keel here at St. Paul's. That will be at 2.30. Visitation will be from 1 o'clock until just before the services, and the visitation will be at the church. Services tomorrow morning at First Lutheran and at St. Paul's. St. Paul's at 8.30, 10.30 at First. Both services have Holy Communion. And the funeral and the worship services on Sunday will all be live streamed on our parish Facebook page, First and St. Paul Lutheran Churches. A quick reminder also to our confirmands of class this coming Wednesday night. Um, that'll be at 7 o'clock at St. Paul's. Those are the announcements I'm going to touch on for today. I just want to talk briefly about today. Today is January 6th, the Feast of the Epiphany. The Epiphany is a very ancient celebration in the church. In fact, at one time it was more celebrated than Christmas is today. Uh, Epiphany is a Greek word meaning to reveal or to shine upon. And it is the fulfillment of prophecy that the birth of Jesus is the revelation of the salvation of the world, not merely to the Jews, but to the whole world. The Feast of the Epiphany is traditionally marked by the coming of the wise men who come to the infant Jesus. These wise men were not Jews. They were foreigners. We don't know their origins or anything beyond what Scripture reveals to us. But they are representative of the Gentiles, of the nations, coming to the Savior. And that is an important step, because initially the Messiah was thought only to belong to the Jews. The Jews believed that when the Messiah came, he would reestablish the kingdom of David, sit upon David's throne, purify the temple for proper worship, and be the king of Israel forever and ever and ever. They did not see the Messiah coming for all nations. The birth of Jesus, of course, changes all of that. Jesus, as John writes in his gospel, has come for the salvation of the world. Not just for a chosen few, but for everyone who believes and trusts in him. And that's an important distinction, because the vast majority of us Christians are not Jewish. We don't have the Jewish tradition. There are some who do, yes, obviously, but the vast majority of us would be considered Gentiles. And so it is with great joy and thanksgiving that we celebrate the Epiphany, the revelation of Jesus to the nations. And of course, that revelation continues on. We are charged with proclaiming that good news, that Christ has come, that salvation has entered into the world, and there is no other name by which we must be saved. And so we proclaim that revelation. It is the mission of the church. It is what we have been tasked to do. And it is important that we continue to fulfill that task as long as we possibly can, and in as many ways as we can. There is always discussion in the church about how we make the good news known. And many times plans and programs have come up to accomplish that, and they work sometimes, and sometimes they really don't work at all. But the simplest way to continue bringing the good news to the world is one person telling another. Study after study has shown that the vast majority of people who come to a church, to join a church, to become a part of the Christian faith, do so by the invitation of someone they know, a neighbor, a friend, a relative, someone whose trust they have, who is a believer in Christ, and who invites them into that living relationship with Jesus. A pastor may be able to invite someone, an evangelist specialized in that may be able to invite someone, but the true evangelism is done by the ordinary, everyday person who simply invites others to come and join them. 
Luther is very clear about that. Evangelism is simply one beggar telling another beggar where the bread is. And we have seen the light of Christ. We have been baptized into his death and resurrection. We know that he is the Savior of the world. And we, in joy and thanksgiving, seek to do that, proclaim him to the world, so that they too might see the Savior. Let's pray a bit. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the coming of the Magi who represent the coming of the nations, the whole of the world coming to Christ. We give you thanks that your son was not only born to be king of Israel, but to be the king of the universe, to be the savior of all who believe in him. We ask that by your Holy Spirit, you would give us wisdom and understanding and insight so that we can faithfully follow him, proclaim him in the world and serve him as best we can. Give us the opportunity to invite and to encourage others to come to worship. We ask and pray these things in your name. Amen. I won't be getting a video up tomorrow because tomorrow is Sunday and I don't have enough time on Sundays, especially Sunday mornings, to get a video done. So, But I will be seeing you again on Monday. I hope and pray you have a good rest of the day. And until then, goodbye now.